Hi, and welcome into Real Conversations. I am Thomas Manning with the Real to Real Film Festival. I'm so glad today to be joined by Echo Wilson, the director of the animated short In Our Nature. So, Echo, thank you so much for taking the time out of your day for this uh, interview conversation. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, so just to start things out, if you want to share a little bit about your background as an anim- animation filmmaker and uh, just what has kind of led you to where you are right now with the UNC School of the Arts. Um, so I have always been an artist in some way or another. I've always sort of seen the world through that lens. And I realized when I was a teenager that my art sort of was created with my mindset being uh, that I could see the movement in these creations of mine. And so that led me to think that animation was the path I should take. And so I applied Actually, I went to the summer program when I was 18 to UNC School of the Arts' first animation summer intensive, and I realized that it really brought me a lot of joy. And so the next year, I began my animation uh, career. Well, not career. You know, I began studying animation at UNCSA. Definitely, for sure. And uh, so this story, this film within our nature – I was really impressed with uh, your taking subject matter that was so deeply philosophical and reflective and thoughtful, but you wrapped it up in the package of, you know, talking animals in a cartoon. So what was your decision in conveying such important messages in a medium that some people would say is for children? Well, I've always been extremely passionate about nature and science and environmentalism. Nature is something that's just very important to me, and I have always connected with it. And so when thinking of what I wanted to do for my senior film, I was thinking that I wanted to create a story that helped people connect with nature and see it in a new way. But, you know, I feel like sometimes telling a fictional story when talking about important issues can make people feel a little more distanced from those topics. So I wanted to create a story based around people's true feelings about this topic and people's true stories and emotions. But at the same time, it's a story about nature. And I thought, what better way to talk about nature than to sort of portray the voice of nature, but through the genuine feelings of human beings and sort of this idea that human beings are a part of nature. And so... So putting ourselves in the role of nature isn't really all that strange of a thing to do. Right, right. And uh, the voice talent was something that I really loved. And I was wondering how you went about selecting the voices for each of the animals. Um, Did you kind of have a certain tone that you wanted conveyed by each character? um, Or was it just kind of a process that it just kind of – the opportunities were presented to you? How did you go about with your voice talent selections? Well, it actually kind of just fell into place in a really nice way. I wanted to just naturally interview people who I knew or who I came across. And actually, a lot of people I interviewed are my family members. So two of the voices, the raccoon and salamander, are actually my uncles. Um, And also, I interviewed some professors and fellow students at UNCSA. Um, I didn't want to limit myself too much, but at the time, those were the resources I had was to interview people who I knew already. And I created the characters sort of around their voices and the characteristics they had and the views that they shared and sort of what animals seemed to best represent those individuals. Yeah, uh, that was just something that really stood out to me, and I really appreciated what you did with that, for sure. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. And um So with the animation, uh, was this all completely hand-drawn? Yes. um, It was done digitally but hand-drawn on a tablet. Um, I used a program called Toon Boom Harmony for the animation, and the backgrounds were done in Photoshop. Right. And uh, just how long did that process take, and what were some of the challenges you experienced with the animation development? Well, it's definitely a a lengthy journey when you only have a few animators to work with. Um, Overall, the the film start to finish took um, 
a full two semesters of work in addition to um, some work before the fall semester. Um, but the actual animation process would, I'd say, took maybe three months. Right. Wow, that's that's really incredible. Yeah. And uh, so this was your senior project, you said? Yes. So what are some of the uh, things that you learned throughout this process that uh, you're hoping to apply to some of your other projects down the line? Well, it was definitely a fantastic exercise in leadership. It was my first time successfully directing a project, and I learned a lot from that and sort of just teamwork skills and such. But um, it was also a great uh, experience in terms of learning how to take an idea and really flesh it out until it becomes its own, you know, highly developed product. I mostly have done smaller projects, and so it was just a really wonderful way of learning how to create something complex from just a single idea. Right, right. And what does it mean for you to have the venue of film festivals to distribute short film like this, one that otherwise might not have as wide of an audience? Well, I just really appreciate the ability to share these ideas with a larger audience. So I didn't know, you know, how things were going to go, especially with the current situation with coronavirus and even just during the semester, just how there are always unexpected things going on. Like, I wasn't sure if I'd be able to share my film. Like, they didn't do the screening at the end of the year for student films, but I'm just so enthusiastic about this opportunity because this is an idea that's so important to me and that I feel like a lot of people might not think of these topics from this perspective. And so sharing sort of my perspective in this way is just really exciting. Most definitely. And uh, what is the one main takeaway that you want audience members to, uh, walk away from viewing in our nature? Uh, What's just one thing that you want them to appreciate from this? The main objective in creating this film that I wanted to share is that human beings don't just have a responsibility to care for nature because we have power over it, but we have a responsibility to connect with nature because we are a part of it. We are just yet another animal in the web of life and that in order to protect nature, we must first go back to our roots and connect with it. Wow. I love that. And uh, that's that's definitely what I, uh, that's definitely what I felt watching this. So that's in our nature and animated short. And uh, we're very honored to be presenting this at Real to Real. Thank you. I'm so, so excited about this opportunity and I really appreciate being able to be a part of it. Certainly. Well, Echo, again, thank you so much for your time today, and uh, we look forward to seeing you at the festival in one way or another, whether it be virtually or in person. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you very much. I'm really looking forward to it. Definitely. And I'm Thomas Manning with Real Conversations with Echo Wilson, the animator behind In Our Nature. Thank you for tuning in, and we will see you guys next time.